Hi there, my name is Mr. Coach, and in this video we're going to talk about scheduling to minimize maximum lateness. And before going into the details, let me first give you an overview of what we're going to talk about. So first of all, I'm going to describe the problem itself. Then we're going to come up with a solution. At the same time, we're going to do an example. Then we're going to give the pseudo code of our solution and we're going to do a time complexity analysis. Finally, we're going to prove our solution to the problem. And then we're going to actually prove that the output of our greedy algorithm will be optimal. So let's start with describing the problem. So imagine this, you're a student and started a bit late on doing your assignments. And this shouldn't be something that's too hard to imagine right then you have to do five assignments each has an expected duration and a deadline and if you start on an assignment you have to keep working on it until you finished it and the most important thing is that you want to minimize the maximum lateness of handing in your assignments so for example you have the following schedule then the first assignment has a deadline which is at day eight and it takes one day to complete the assignment then the lateness of handing in the assignment will be zero as you have to hand it in on day eight but you had it already in on day one then the following assignment has to be handed in on day seven it takes two days to complete the assignment and therefore the lateness will be zero as you have already handed it in on day three while the deadline was day seven etc etc then for example for this assignment the deadline is four you hand it in on day eight and therefore the lateness will be four as the difference between the two is four days so you had it in four days late so the thing that is you'd like a schedule that minimizes the maximum lateness and the maximum lateness in this schedule is obviously four as that's the maximum value of being late for an assignment so let's come up with some formal notation for this problem so in a formal way every assignment j has an expected duration tj and a deadline dj if assignment j starts at sj and it finishes at fj, where fj is defined as the sum of the starting time plus the expected duration. And finally, the lateness of an assignment j is defined as lj, which is defined as the maximum of zero and fj minus dj. So the finishing time minus the deadline. And this is because, well, if fj is smaller than dj, so if your finishing time of the assignment is smaller than the deadline, you will get a negative number. And actually, you just handed in the assignment on time, so the lateness will be zero. That's why we have this maximum function here. And if fj is greater than the deadline, then you handed it in too late, so the number will be positive, and therefore the output will be a positive number. And so you'd like a schedule that minimizes the maximum lateness, l, where l is defined as the maximum value for lj so the maximum lateness and for this i've created a table where dj and dj have been filled in for every assignment so for the first assignment we have an expected duration of three days and the deadline is day four yes and also for the rest of the assignments and thus as we've already seen the maximum lateness of this schedule is four so l is four and just to be complete dj in this case will be eight lj will be zero and tj is here one Okay, so let's now directly go into the solution. And this is not actually what we want. What we want to do, and what thus is the key to the solution in order to get the minimum maximum lateness, is to sort all assignments ascending on their deadline dj. So d1 is smaller or equal than the second deadline, and second deadline is smaller or equal than the third, etc. etc. So this is not what we're going to do. We're going to sort them on the deadline, as I've already done in this table. And we're going to add these assignments one by one to the schedule. So let's throw away this one. There we go. And we're going to just add the first assignment as this has the minimum deadline. So there we go. So we're done at day three. The deadline is day four. So the lateness will be zero. Then we're going to do the next assignment, which is not a minimum deadline. So we're going to add that as well. There we go. So we finished it on day five and the deadline is day seven. The lateness is again zero. Then we can, for example, take this assignment or this assignment and schedule it it actually doesn't matter for the maximum lateness as we will prove later on so let's for example take assignment three we're going to add that then we are going to take assignment four the lateness is still zero here because we've handed it in two days earlier and thus on time then the lateness would here actually be two as the deadline is day eight and we hand in the assignment on day ten 
and for the last assignment we will hand in the assignment on day 12 and the deadline was on day 10 thus we're two days late but the maximum lateness is now two so we've minimized the maximum lateness and this is thus smaller than the previous one which was four so this is a schedule in which we have minimized the maximum lateness which we will prove later on so now that we've seen how the algorithm works, let's have a look at the pseudocode of the algorithm. So this is the pseudocode of the algorithm. What we're going to do first is we're going to sort all assignments by their deadline so that D1 is more equal than the second deadline, etc. So the last assignment, which is the key of the algorithm. And then we're going to use the order for the following. Initially, we will create a variable T, which gets the value zero. And T represents the current time in which the algorithm is at the moment. So now t gets zero as we didn't go over the assignment yet then we will initialize a which is equal to the empty set and a will be the schedule that greedy produces and it will contain all intervals of the assignment containing their starting time and their finishing time then for every assignment we're going to do the following for sj we're going to give it the value t so the current time that the algorithm is at the finishing time is going to get the current time plus the expected duration time of the assignment and then we're going to add this interval to a because this is the pair of the starting time and the finishing time so it's got the information we need for the interval and then we're going to update the current time of the algorithm by the finishing time of the assignment and then we're going to the next assignment and if we've done this for every assignment then we have scheduled all assignments to the set of intervals and we will just simply output the schedule so that's it for the pseudocode of course one important question remains and that is cool but what's the running time of the algorithm and this is important as well well the answer to it is actually quite simple there are two main important things namely the following we have to sort all assignments so this is going to take in worst case the big o of n log n time this is because we can for example do this with merge sort then we have this for loop which we have to iterate over n times this is equal to the amount of assignments so it will be in the worst case the big o of n and then the big o that will be dominant in terms of time complexity will be the big o of n log n as it's greater than o n this is actually quite fast and as you've seen it's actually quite easy to solve the running time of this algorithm so now that we've seen the pseudocode of the algorithm I think it's time to prove that the greedy algorithm actually produces a schedule that is optimal so let's do that so before we can actually do that we're going to need the following definition the definition of an inversion and we're also going to need another proof namely that if we interchange the assignments of a pair of an inversion that the maximum lateness will not increase this is going to be important for the proof that the schedule that greedy produces is optimal but that's something we'll get to in a few seconds so define an inversion in a schedule to be a pair of assignments n and m for which it holds that the deadline of n is smaller than the deadline of m but m is scheduled before n so this is something different than greedy would do take the following two assignments for example this is an inversion and what has been done is that the deadline of n is smaller than the deadline of m but m has been scheduled before n and greedy would do this different because greedy schedules the assignments in an ascending order on the deadline so this must be an inversion what we're going to prove now is the following theory which says that interchanging the assignments of a pair of an adjacent inversion does not increase the maximum lateness as i said we're going to need this proof for our final proof and the proof has to do with the following so let l be the lateness before interchanging the two so before we're going to interchange it it will still be this inversion and everything annotated by a prime symbol will be the result so the result after interchanging the two so we're going to compare this inversion with if we interchange m and n so then the assignments will be scheduled as greedy would do it so let's have a look at l prime m so the lateness of m after interchanging the two and for this it holds that the finishing time of m after interchanging the two minus the deadline of m is equal to the lateness and this is just a definition this is how we've defined how to come up with the lateness of an assignment so we then interchange the two and m will actually be at the back so this is what f 
prime m is this is the time and this is actually equal to the finishing time of n before interchanging the two because that's what this current situation is about so that's what the inversion is so we can write it differently as fn minus dm because f prime m is the same as fn and then we can write this differently because we have an inversion here and because dm is 7 and dn is 5 and based on the inversion where we've said that dn is smaller than dm and therefore the result of this will be greater or equal than l prime m because we're replacing something which actually has a value that is smaller based on what we've set here. And then because this is again the definition of the lateness of n, we can write it again as the lateness of n, and thus the lateness of m after interchanging the two is actually smaller or equal than the lateness before having interchanged the two. And that's what we had to prove, so the maximum lateness does not increase when interchanging the assignments of a pair of an adjacent inversion. So QED and now we're going to use this proof for showing that the schedule of greedy is optimal. So we have the following theorem, greedy schedule is optimal, and we're going to use a proof by contradiction for this. So suppose schedule S is not optimal. That's because there's a schedule S prime that is optimal, which is different and has the fewest number of inversions of all optimal schedules. Besides, it also has no idle time. And S prime is different because of the following. So here we're going to make a case distinction. If S does not have any inversion, well then the lateness is the same. So S is different in this case because we have interchanged two assignments that have the same deadline, for example, because then this is not an inversion. But if we interchange two assignments with the same deadline, then the maximum lateness will still be the same. So this contradicts the definition of S prime because S prime should be more between quotation marks optimal. And if S prime has an inversion, suppose the pair N and M is an adjacent inversion. Well then, if we interchange N and M, this won't increase the maximum lateness as we've proved earlier here. That's, that's what this theorem said. Besides, it reduces the amount of inversions. So it will actually become a schedule that is more similar to greedy schedule. But this, again, contradicts the definition of S prime because the maximum lateness won't be increased. It will actually remain the same or it will get smaller. So in both cases there is a contradiction and thus our assumption about that schedule S is not optimal must be false. Thus S must be optimal and this is what we had to prove. So QED. So this QED algorithm is actually pretty fast and it also produces the optimal schedule. So this is actually quite nice. And I think that's a nice way to end this video. What we've done is we've described the problem, we've come up with a solution and did an example. Then we've discussed the pseudocode of the algorithm and the time complexity analysis. And finally, we have proved that the greedy schedule is optimal based on that when we interchange the assignment of a pair of an adjacent inversion, then the maximum lateness will not increase. So this is an important proof as well. So that's it for the video. If you thought this video was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up to give it a like. If you still have any questions, please make sure to use the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.